was right here. Where'd Adam go? This is Ollie. Ollie, he's from Syria. Hi, how are you? Salam. Salam alaikum. Sterling Technologies in Erie, Pennsylvania is an American company that needs workers, but has had trouble filling the jobs because local residents are failing drug tests. I would say we've probably had 20% every time we run a random test, 20% of the people are failing. It's pretty high. Yeah, it's pretty high. We're seeing positive tests anywhere from marijuana through amphetamines right all the way through crystal meth and heroin. And it's not just here. The percent of employees in the U.S. testing positive for drugs has increased steadily over the last three years, reaching the highest level in a decade. So how many, how many people here are refugees? Almost everybody that you're seeing here. At Sterling, refugees have become a hiring solution to the drug problem. The immigrant workforce that's here has filled a void that we had that we were unable to fill with our local labor pool that we were drawing from. It's a dynamic that can be seen in many parts of the country, from upstate New York to Ohio, Indiana, and Kentucky. But some companies that work with refugees in these places don't want to talk about it. They don't want to admit that there is a problem when it comes to drug testing and refugees are filling that void. With President Trump's executive order putting a temporary ban on refugees and so much talk about the lack of jobs in the Rust Belt, businesses are in a tough spot, especially when they're in need of drug-free workers like Talib Azamel, a refugee from Syria who arrived to Erie, Pennsylvania last summer. Within three months, he got a job at the factory. In terms of business, how important are refugees to a city like Erie? I think they're extremely important. I mean, they're the one growing group in the city. You know, it's a city that's been on decline with their population, so it's the only growing group. The refugees in Erie have arrived to a city struggling economically and dealing with a drug epidemic. Would you like to be a teacher again in America? Well, the reality is when business owners are telling you that they can't find native residents who will do these jobs or they can't find enough people in the community to pass a drug test, what are they to do? They need to seek out employees somewhere. And for now, immigrants are a really good source of that labor. She's from Cuba. We had man from Syria, the United States, Indonesia, Vietnam, five countries in this one room right here, yes. In Louisville, Kentucky, nearly 6,000 refugees have arrived in the last five years, helping companies fill jobs. When we work with, for instance, Kentucky uh, Refugee Ministries, we haven't had any troubles at all with drug testing. So refugees really are, are filling that gap for you. Yeah, in this instance, there were refugees who were available, who were ready to contribute, and we were thrilled to be able to give them that opportunity. What size? Can you check what size you have? We are going to get you some shoes, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, good luck tomorrow. Okay. Send us as many as you can. I hear this every single day, whether it's a small local restaurant, coffee shop to Amazon, you know, we get flyers, we get emails, phone calls, we need people. Okay, what do we remember about work shifts? We usually get someone employed within three days. We've had someone start within one day. That's how fast refugees are able to get employed. So the refugees are not taking the jobs. The refugees are filling the gaps. We spoke with locals about the struggle to find jobs because of drugs. Right now, heroin and meth is one of the biggest problems. Recently in Louisville, there were 151 overdose calls in just four days. And methamphetamine use is so high here, the number of people testing positive for job drug tests is 47% higher than the national average. I did uh, crack cocaine and heroin. After trying to get jobs and lose jobs, get a job and lose a job, I said, might as well not try, because I'm pretty sure people want to keep their job. It's just not knowing how to stop. In Erie, Pennsylvania, we hear similar stories. I'm 36, and my drug of choice was heroin. What kind of jobs were you looking for in Erie that you couldn't get? Like retail, either like small corner stores, any stores like that, they don't give someone like me. They wouldn't give me the opportunity. You know, they just see my background, and that's all they see. They don't see me as a person. I mean, what do you think of the fact that for these employers, they've had to go to new workers because of the, the drug problem? I understand completely. I mean, those refugees, they come here with the, 
the American dream in their mind. You know, they come to work, come to build their life. You know, they obviously work hard compared to a drug addicted individual that just scrapes by, does the bare minimum to get by every day. So I completely understand with the business owners. I know that refugees need an opportunity when they come here and, and employers give them the opportunity. But people like us that live here also need an opportunity. And I'm not saying they don't deserve it, um, but we deserve it as well. Every decision on trade, on taxes, on immigration, on foreign affairs will be made to benefit American workers and American families. When you hear that our president wants to ban refugees, what goes through your mind, especially from a business perspective? Okay, great question. I knew eventually you are going to get to that question. 25% of our workforce are either refugees or immigrants. Without them, once again, there are probably costs that we would have incurred that would have made us non-profitable. So there certainly is an impact to that. Sterling Technologies senior management voted for President Trump and hoped to grow their business under his administration. Do I want to see all of my people deported? Absolutely not. They're a part of this company. They've helped build this company. We can't grow without people that want to do the work. What can be done about it? People need to get off drugs. It's something that in our area of the country, it's really bad. Drugs are a serious problem. We're going to continue to test. If anything, we're going to make it more stringent. A workforce that's not doing drugs is the workforce that we want.